Now, when you say chord melody playing, it, you don't have to play a chord with every single melody note. But whenever there is a chord change, you have to at least one time play it so that the, uh, the chord is expressed and related to whoever is listening. Um, one of the principles of chord melody playing is that you want the melody note to stand out, so you want it to be the highest note in the chord. So if I'm playing a C chord and this is the melody note, I'm not going to strum all the way down to the first string. I'm just going to strum the chord to the second string because that'll be the that'll be the melody note. And if I did play this higher note, it kind of obscures the melody. So throughout the different arrangements that I'll do in this lesson, you'll see that principle come into play. You want the high, the melody note to stand out and be the highest note in the chord. Um, when you play chord uh, melody arrangements down here in the first position, with every single chord shape you play, there are nearby notes, adjacent notes, that are useful, that, that will be needed to play melodies. Sometimes, a lot of times actually, the melody of the song will be right there in the chord you're playing. If you play an F chord, it'll be these notes. If you play a C chord, it'll be some of these notes. But sometimes you have to add on a note that isn't in the chord, like on C, you might add this note or this note, and so on. And, and if you sit with any chord and experiment and play all the nearby notes, you'll find that some of them sound harmonious and some of them sound, you know, kind of inharmonious and unlikely to be useful. Like if I go, like that doesn't go very good with the C chord or, or this note, you know, but this note does. So you can do that with every single chord shape that you know. There's a G chord and these notes sound harmonious because they're major scale notes. But that one sounds a little odd and that one sounds a little odd with a G. So you can tell, your ear will tell you which notes are, are useful or helpful. Um, we're going to start with a song in the key of C. We're going to do an old cowboy song called Red River Valley. You know, they used to teach it in schools. I don't think they do anymore. And it's been tons of cowboy movies, too. Henry Fonda sang it to his mother in, Grapes, in the movie of Grapes of Wrath. Um, so first, I'll just, I'll just play a verse and chorus of the song and sing it so you, in case you don't know the song, it's Come and sit by my side if you love me and not hasten to bid me adieu and remember the Red River Valley and the cowboy who loved you so true one more time from this valley they say you are going we will miss your bright eyes and sweet smile for they say you are taking the sunshine that has brightened our lives for a while now those you can see that's just three chords well maybe four there's c and F and G and maybe a C7 it's just before you went to the F. So those are the only chords in the tune. If you're going to play the melody, uh, it really helps if you're playing the melody down here, really helps to know the C major scale because if you're in the key of C, which we are in this tune, a lot of the melody notes, or maybe all of them in this case, are in the uh, C major scale. So, so here's the C major scale. Just your do re mi scale, and if you started here, you could keep going. But 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 uh, but uh, we're just going to stay down here, so we won't go any higher than this. We've got just practice it by going up and down like that, and then when you uh, hear a melody in your head, hopefully. You, it'll help you just try to trying to find the melody. Like you could go. Um, this is Mozart here. <laughs> but you get the idea. So Red River Valley. First way, the first thing to do when you're uh, creating a chord melody arrangement is is to do what we just did: learn the the chords and the order they come in and so on. And then when you want to add melody to it. Uh, 
hunt for the melody notes and they're going to be major scale notes and a lot of them are going to be in the chord you're playing so even if you're just playing the uh, melody notes like this actually go to the do the chord changes like it goes to a G here back to C there's the F so I'm making those chord changes and uh, add, doing the little add-ons to the chords that see here's a G but the first string is open then you have to add this note which isn't usually in a G but it is a major scale note and then back to C and these are all in the chord until you get to this and then so this is all written out for you and it's a good thing to practice but as you're practicing it like I said even though you're not strumming the chords make these chord shapes and then you can start strumming chords with the melody like that sometimes I'm strumming with my thumb like this and sometimes I'm doing sort of doing a pinch where I'm playing the melody note but then sort of brushing up so you hear other notes and then again even my thumb brushing down too at the same same time so you may have noticed when I played that melody that way with the chords that there were some long pauses that just were uh, begging to be filled with something you can fill them with with random notes in whatever chord is happening at that moment or you can fill them with strums like this filling it with strums you can also do little arpeggios which means going up and down the notes of a chord like uh, let's see and just adding adding notes like that um i'll do one arrangement of it that has some of each some of the strumming for fills and some of the little arpeggios for fills and that'll be the one that's written down for you to test. So that's the arrangement that will be written out in your PDF uh, book with tablature and music and all that. So that's an arrangement of Red River Valley down here in the first position. What if we wanted to play it uh, up the neck somewhere um, just to get you know, a little variety? So we're going to have to talk about uh, we're going to have to talk about chord relationships and and chord shapes up the neck to do that. When you played it in C, your three chords were just the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord, C, F, and G. Those numbers refer to the major scale. C is the first note in the C major scale, so a C chord is a one chord when you're in the key of C. F is the fourth note in the C major scale, so if you're in the key of C, F is the four chord. And G is the fifth note in the C major scale, so G is the five chord. And thousands and thousands of songs are made up of just the one four and five chord and that's in folk music like this uh, or in country music and in rock and in blues and pretty much all most kinds of music uh, that's that's what's called an immediate chord family the one four and five and when you go to play it up the neck you need to kind of know how to do one four and five up the neck uh, we're going to play Red River Valley up here in the key of E, it'll be something like. Mm -hmm. 
So let's look at the chords that I'm playing. My E is this chord here. Sometimes I use my little finger to play these three fingers. Some people, these three strings, some people would do it like this, like a barred A chord. I do this instead. And then for the, the, next, the five chord would be B. This is E, and B is the five chord, the fifth note in the E scale. And I'm adding this note to it, because that's a melody note. And, and then it goes to the five chord again. You know, instead of playing it with your uh, thumb like I'm doing, you could do this, or you could just do this F shape here without a bass note. Um, it goes back to the E, and finally goes to, this is the four chord. I did it like this, which is the same as this, a barred E shape, and then back to the B. So your three chords are basically E, B, and A, and that's one, five, and four. And whenever your, your one chord, the key you're in, has got a fifth string root like this, the five chord is always this F shape or hard E shape right above it. That's one and that's five. And then down here is four, whether you do it like this or like this. So you've got a one, four, five chord family that's movable. If I was in the key of C, it would be one, five, and four down here. Or in the key of D, it would be 1, 5, and 4. Your roots are 1, 5, and 4, like that. So in E, it's 1, 5, and 4. Okay, so let's look at the chord melody arrangement again. So I'm going, I'm strumming up to the second string, because I don't want to hear that first string. It would be a higher note. And the melody note, remember, it's supposed to stand out by being the highest note. Now we've got this this uh, B chord, but I'm adding this melody note to it that actually makes it a B sixth. And then back to the to the E and just strum up to the third string because that's your melody note. And then here I'm doing this abbreviated E chord. Instead of playing the whole thing like this, I'm just doing the top three notes and then going to the B again. There's an extra note there. Okay, that's a different way of playing the E7. I'm playing, it's like a C7 shape. You know, this is the C note, so this is the root of that shape. C7, D7, E7. So... So I'm assuming something that I shouldn't take for granted, and that is that you know the notes on the sixth string and the fifth string. When you're playing up the neck, a lot of the chords, most of the chords you play, have a sixth string root like this, I mean like this, or this, or a fifth string root like this, or the seventh version of that. So you really, to get around on the fretboard, you really need to know, you know, the notes on the sixth and fifth strings, you know, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, and so on, and C, D, E, F, G, A, and in between, the in-between notes, if this is D and this is E, this note has two names. It's either D sharp or E flat. So if you wanted to play an E flat chord, you would do that. And this is A and B, so this is B flat. If you want to play a B flat chord, you would do this, or this, or this version of it, or just the top four strings like that. So uh, that's... Uh, and one essential factor in navigating up and down the fretboard. And notice that for this major, these two, two major chords, there's variations of them. For example, this can turn into a seventh by doing that. That's just like turning your A into an A seventh by doing that. So you can turn it into a minor chord by lowering the second string, just like you turned your A into an A minor by lowering the second string. That's the same shape. So you've got a fifth string root major chord, minor chord, and seventh chord, and we also did this version of the seventh chord. And then when you're playing the, the major chord with the sixth string root, there it is. You can also do it like this, or just like this. You can make it minor by opening up the third string, or just playing the top four strings like that. You can make it a seventh a couple of different ways. You can lower the, take this finger out, and that's a seventh. You can also play this F shape and lower the fourth string, and that's a seventh. That's really just the top four strings of this. 
So, so you've got a major minor and seventh chord with a six string root. So that's a good start. If you have a major minor and seventh chord with a six string root and a fifth string root, that's a good start. It's going to be helpful eventually to know a third way to play these chords, and that's with a fourth string root. So, um, so back to Red River Valley. See, we did it in E. You, there was no open strings in that, so you could move it around and do it anywhere. Here's the exact same thing in the key of D. And so on. Or you could have done it down here, or way up the neck here, and I don't know, in G. And so it's, it's entirely movable, no open strings. Um, so that's pretty cool. As we, as we go along with other arrangements, we'll do the same thing. We'll learn a version of it down in first position and then a movable version. And every time we learn a movable version of it, there will probably be some new chord shape or some new theory concept like that 1-4-5 thing that we just went through with Red River Valley.